Snake, to gain access to the lab, you'll need an ID card. You can get one from a guard in an orange jacket stationed in an area where you can hear Quetzal singing. To get the ID card from the soldier, do a body check. You've got to get inside that lab before the AI gets shipped out. Get a move on. You can steal items from soldiers by putting them to sleep or knocking them out and then doing a body check. Get close to the unconscious soldier and press the action button when you see the icon. Or you can sneak up on them from behind and do a hold up. It also works if the soldier's near death. Keep in mind though, if you wait too long, you'll have a dead soldier instead of a dying one. And you can't do a body check if you're holding the Fulton recovery device either. So don't try. Scouts are outfitted with camouflage to help them hide. Some of them look kind of weird, like they've got seaweed growing all over them. Ah, ghillie suits. Not much difference between them and any other scout in terms of combat ability, but it does make them harder to spot. I'm sure it does. You've come across these before? Yeah, the Soviet Union. The first time, it took me a full hour to find the guy and take him out. Kaz, do you know what they shine? Shine? Like how? Like, from their heads. Their heads? How about their hair? They have a lot of it. What are you talking about? How the hell would I know? How about a parrot? Did anybody hear a parrot squawk? A parrot? Look, Snake, you're talking to the wrong guy. I mean, Cecile's the bird expert. Wait a second, what am I saying? You're not making any sense to begin with. Never mind. It's a long story. I'll figure it out another way. Forget about it. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, we've already lost too many good people to these surprise encounters. Make sure you don't end up like one of them. I do not know if I recall such large ruins being there. Well, didn't you say there's a lot we don't know about Costa Rica's ancient civilizations? You talked about some giant stone balls, too. What are those? Oh... The stone spheres of Costa Rica? They are an assortment of giant spheres carved from stone that were discovered in the jungles of Costa Rica about 50 years ago. What's so special about that? What if I told you some of them are nearly perfect spheres and that they were carved out of granite, which is quite a hard substance. Hmm. Could be good for laying a trap. And if they're spherical, they roll easily too. Snake! Snake, be careful when going through areas you've passed through before. The enemy could be waiting to ambush you. And do you know how to identify the soldier with the ID card? Yeah, Cecile told me. He's in a forest with some Quetzals wearing an orange jacket. He'll be from the lab, probably out on patrol. Do a body check to see if he's got the card. Did you see a Quetzal snake? Yep. What do you think? Did it look like a snake? Huh? No, it, it didn't look like a snake. Oh. Really? It must be different from the Quetzalcoatl then. Quetzalcoatl? A winged snake from the Mayan and Aztec legend. A winged snake. <laughs> Weird, right? I bet it's UMA. Amanda and everybody says Quetzalcoatl is a Quetzal in the form of a god. But there's no way anybody mistake a snake for a bird. I think the legend of Quetzalcoatl came first. Somebody saw it and adopted it as their god before they saw the Quetzal. After that, somebody saw a bird that looked like the image of the god, and so they named it Quetzal. You mean it happened the other way around? Well, if you ask me, the Quetzalcoatl was probably a pterosaur that survived. I mean, it's got wings and, and it's a reptile, so it probably looks kind of like a snake, right? Pterosaurs live on in Africa even today. They're called the Congamato and the Elitziao. So it makes sense that there'd be pterosaurs on the American continent, too, and that they survived until the Mayan and Aztec eras. Wow. Well, lucky for us, they're not still around today. Who says they aren't? 
The dinosaurs supposedly died out 65 million years ago, and the Aztec civilization only rose about 600 years ago. If they managed to survive 65 million years, surely they couldn't be wiped out in 600. Pterosaurs survive today in the African countries of Cameroon and Congo. Each tribe calls them by a different name, like Congomato or Litsiao. There sure are a lot of dinosaurs running around the Congo. Well, a lot of the land hasn't been settled by humans yet. They've survived all this time, just undiscovered by man. But they're finding fossils in America too. This one they found three years ago in Texas had a wingspan of more than 12 meters. If I saw a gigantic pterosaur like that, I'd probably call it a god too. Yup, I'm sure that's what the Quetzalcoatl really is. That was some escape you made from Strangelove's lab. Security inside was not so tight. The door to my room was locked from the outside, of course. But she took off the blindfold at bath time. So she could wash my hair. Huh. <laughs> Pretty luxurious treatment for a prisoner. Hmm, wasn't it? She wouldn't undo the handcuffs, but she washed my body for me instead. And with such gentle care. Why'd you run away? Didn't she say you could go home in a month? If your escape attempt failed, you'd be in greater danger than before. I was supposed to be giving a presentation on the distribution of Costa Rican bird species at a conference. The date was approaching quickly. So, I pretended I had to use the toilet and made my escape. I found an ID card and searched everywhere for my equipment and my tape. But a soldier saw me. It was a miracle I managed to get away. There was no time to find the tape. I do not care about the conference. I am lucky enough to still be in one piece. You bounce back quick. You don't? Not sure. I try not to dwell too much on the past, but... Then don't. There is no point. I'm so glad to be out of there. I never felt safe, you know? Tell me about it. Well, I think she's interested in women. And I think she took a fancy to me. Oh, mm. well, that's, um... Uh. Besides, it is much nicer here. Was it just the two women in the lab? Most of the time, we. Oui. And one of them, you only heard her voice, right? Yes, that is correct. Such a wonderful voice. It sent chills up my spine. What was the other woman like? Ah, don't even think about it. She's not the slightest interest in men. No, it's part of my mission to... <laughs> only teasing. Let me think. I believe she was in her thirties. Pretty, with a good sense of style, but austere in her tastes. A very unusual woman. And she was doing research on AI. AI? So that is what she was up to. You know, she did say something interesting. That people should not be going into space. That it is too dangerous. <sighs> An automated control system for rockets, then. She said something about wanting to get closer to her dying wish. I think she must have been talking about an old lover. Lover? You mean another woman? Huh? <laughs> My! Aren't we curious about the women and other women? You want to hear the terrible things she tried to do to me? That's not what I meant. It's all right. You can be honest. <laughs> You two seem to get along awfully well together. No, no. Not at all. I think you're hiding something. <sighs> Never mind. Aren't you supposed to be looking for the Quetzal? Here, I'll demonstrate its call for you. I knew it. Let's go over this one more time. First... I need an ID card to get into the lab. That is correct. From the outside, it looks like any other room. But on the inside, it is a state-of-the-art research facility. 
And your ID card got taken away from you by some guy in an orange jacket. Exactly. I had a Getzel singing nearby. It has not been that long since it happened. Hmm. It could be tricky if he's out on patrol. But if he's a stationary sentry, you don't think the Ketzel's moved? Its nest is probably nearby. I do not think it will go away anytime soon. Good. I'll get on looking for that soldier. If you forget what it sounds like, I will do the call for you again. Just give me a call anytime you'd like to hear it. Yeah, I'll do that. Let me get this straight. You were in Costa Rica as a bird watcher? Yes, I was. Not for pleasure, though. I am a researcher, after all. I am studying the distribution of Latin American bird species. With today's compact cassette tape recorders, even a woman like me can carry her recording equipment by herself. But it was a mistake to come alone. Hmm. Even so, there sure are a lot of wild birds in Costa Rica. Hmm. Aren't there? Over 800 different species. Said to be more than 10% of all living bird species on Earth. How many can you name, Mr. Ornithologist? Well, hey, I was just trying not to scare you. You should at least have a basic knowledge of Costa Rica. How about this? I will give you a thorough education, Mr. First Time Ornithologist. Uh, uh okay. Start by telling me about the Quetzal. Cecile, what's that machine you said you used to make those recordings of yours? A cassette, um, something or other. A cassette recorder. Or a cassette densuke, as they say in Japan. Yeah, that. What is that thing, anyway? A portable recording device released last year by a Japanese company. Sony. It uses compact cassettes, making it far lighter than open reel machines. It still weighs five kilograms, but the exercise won't kill me. <laughs> it is user-friendly, too. All the buttons have markings on them, allowing you to operate it without looking at it. <laughs> Can you imagine missing the shot of a lifetime simply because you blinked? Oh, that would be devastating. But where'd they come up with Densuke? Sounds like a Japanese name. Allow me to feel that one. Kaz? Densuke's a nickname that comes from the name of an old manga character. Oh. Uh, was he some recording nerd, too? Don't give me that. Recording atmospheric noises is an exhilarating art. There's nothing like capturing the real world in action on tape. It's just like taking pictures with a camera, only with a microphone instead of a viewfinder. Um, uh, sure. Listen to a tape with your eyes closed and the scene just bursts to life in your mind's eye. Tell him, Cecile. Ah, absolutely. When I listen to the sounds of the birds in my apartment, it is like I am back in the forest where I recorded them. See? She's a Parisian. She knows what's chic. If you say so. And what do you like to record, Monsieur Miller? Me? Steam locomotives, no question. The roar of the engine, the throaty steam whistle. More animal than machine. Uh, don't get me started. Steam locomotives are a dying breed in Japan. I wouldn't mind going back for a bit and making some new tapes while I still can. Oh, you are less civilized than I thought. L less civilized? I detest those beasts. The noise frightens off all the birds. Then there is the smoke. I much prefer the peace and quiet of the forest. Uh, Cecile, wait. That, that came out wrong. I... Hmm. Sure it did. All right. What do you want to know about Quetzals? Hmm. Give me the basics. Something that'll help me find one. Okay, then. First of all, as I'm sure you remember, the Quetzals' wings and back are emerald green, a dazzling blend of viridian fading into blue. Its belly is brilliant red, and its tail feathers are white. Such a gorgeous bird. Also... The male has two long decorative feathers, but only during breeding season. Among birds, males are usually more beautiful than females. Like a peacock's tail. Yes, just like that. 
It is interesting to note that while their bodies are only 40 centimeters long, many cat cells reach over a meter in length when you include their decorative plumage. Cat cells typically build their nests by making holes in dead trees with their beaks, about three to four meters above the ground. They are omnivorous and eat everything from nuts to lizards. Where can I find one? Their habitat stretches across the entire tropical cloud forest. You may end up having to rely on its song to find one. Good to know. I will do an imitation. Listen closely. Hey, not bad. Ah, shall I do a chicken next? Gluck, gluck, gluck. No thanks. That's enough. Are you sure? How about a monkey? Yeah, don't need that either. Oh, all right then. Costa Rica is the home to many hummingbirds as well. The people here call them Colibri. Colibri, huh? Hummingbirds are the world's smallest birds. Although they can vary from species to species, most are around 10 centimeters in length, and the smallest, no more than 5. It is amazing to think that something so small can still be a fully developed bird. Hmm. I think a bird that tiny would get mistaken for a bug. Actually, they are often mistaken for sphinx moths. The little darlings feed on flower nectar, and their beaks are long and thin to help them drink up the nectar. They beat their wings far faster than any other bird. The smallest ones, over 70 times a second. Can you imagine? What for? They hover in midair while they suck their nectar. They can even fly straight backwards. Hovering. Like a helicopter. That's why Amanda and her unit called that chopper Colibri. I think it is an insult to the birds to give their names to weapons. Don't you? Don't ask me. Ask the birds how they feel about it. Have you ever heard of the mannequins? Never. Unbelievable! You came all the way to Costa Rica and you've never even heard of them? I didn't come here to look at... Mannequins are known for their beautiful courtship dances. The orange-colored mannequin is said to live on the Pacific side. The white-bearded mannequin on the Caribbean side. And the long-tailed mannequin is in the central basin. The long-tailed mannequins are especially distinctive. What's special about them? First, each young male picks an older male to teach him how to dance. Then, teachers and pupils all get in a group and dance for the females. However, only the teachers get paired off with females. The pupils practice their technique for seven years before striking out on their own and finding their own pupils. I guess it takes time to get good at anything, whether it's dancing or soldiering. Mannequins always have plenty to eat. Apparently, that is why they have so much free time to practice dancing. Hmm. Unlike us, obviously. Another well-known bird of the cloud forest is the three-wattled bellbird. Wattled? What the hell's a wattle? <laughs> it is just like your beard, Snake. What? It is a piece of flesh that hangs down from its chin. Kind of like whiskers, but not made of air. A hanging piece of flesh. Oui, and it only grows on males. Nothing more important to a man than his beard. So, these birds are in the cloud forest, too. They are normally found in the lowland rainforests, but they migrate into the highland cloud forests during breeding season. What the three-wattled bellbird is best known for, though, is its loud call. It makes these metallic bong and ding sounds, hence the name bellbird. It hardly sounds like a bird at all. Even an expert bird caller like me cannot do it justice. Oh, it doesn't sound like I'll be mistaking it for a cat's hole. Do you know the national bird of Costa Rica? Uh. Honestly, and you call yourself an ornithologist. The national bird of Costa Rica is the clay-colored robin. It's a plain-looking brown bird found throughout the country. Why'd they make it the national bird, then? 
Are there all kinds of better-looking birds like the Quetzal? Ah, the clay-colored robin has the most exquisite song. And I think it is part of the Costa Rican national character to choose a bird everyone knows and loves over prettier ones. Somehow these people don't strike me as being very Latin. Speaking as an ornithologist, I am rather happy with that choice. Not all birds have to be pretty. Oh, and just so you know, the Quetzal is the national bird of Guatemala. The scarlet macaw and the great green macaw are also representative birds of Costa Rica. Macaws are a type of parrot. Enormous, stately birds. Macaw. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. <laughs> but of course you have. You are an ornithologist, no? Stop it! <laughs> so, tell me, where do macaws live in Costa Rica today? Oh, come on now. <laughs> I am only teasing you. Macaws live not in the cloud forests, but in the rainforests on the Pacific side of Costa Rica. In the past, they were a common sight all across the country. But lately, the population has decreased dramatically. One possible cause is the pesticide spread to facilitate large-scale banana cultivation. Evicted from their own land, huh? Thankfully. Conservation efforts have been gaining some momentum lately. <laughs>